What's going on guys? Um, it's been a long time since uh, I've been on YouTube and I kind of feel bad about it because I got into the swing of things, kind of got my YouTube channel growing real quick. It was doing really good and then I just shut off. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, I've moved farther from the water now. Uh, I got a new job. I've done all this stuff that I just really haven't had the amount of time that I need to be able to go out each week and get you all a good you know 12 15 minute video of me catching fish uh so i've been talking to a buddy of mine and he gave me the idea of if i can't go out and fish that day or that week you know why not do a how-to video and explain to y'all and show y'all and teach y'all what i do to where i can go out and catch fish <clears throat> um i do a lot of bridge fishing around here I, f I mainly target redfish from this bridge during the colder months of the year um so i figured why not make a video for you guys to where if you happen to go to a bridge or you do go to a bridge and just can't produce fish uh, the way that some of the people around here can, I'm going to give you all the information, all the stuff that you need to where you can go out on any night and your chances of catching a fish is, it's extreme. You're 99% you're of the 90 90 of the time, you're going to walk away with at least one fish, maybe more Sometimes you'll go out there and they just they're not there. Um, it happens to me sometimes But usually when I go out to Bob Sykes bridge I catch a fish or two fish or five fish or you know However many fish that I feel like staying around and catching um, It's actually really simple um, A lot of people just they use the wrong rigs wrong setups They're just kind of they're doing it. They're in the right places, but with the wrong stuff uh, so I'm gonna Go ahead and break it down in this video exactly what you will need and exactly where you need to be to where you can go out there and catch a fish. Alrighty, so the first thing that I'm gonna that I'm gonna talk to you guys about is um, if you're going to target a fish um, at a bridge, at you know, a, you you have to find structure or something different, a bottom change from like a grass bottom to sand or you know there's something different there that has that that specific fish holding up in that area so me being a bridge fisherman most of the time whenever i'm targeting redfish um i always fish structure um i want the current to be moving you don't really want a slack tide because they they really don't eat then it's kind of it's kind of weird to see but it it is true um also when i walk down sykes bridge i know that some spots are deeper and I'm not talking about just, you know, go out to the end, oh, it's so deep. I, it's really not that deep all the way to the end of the Sykes. But um, there are some spots where it kind of it dips down, and then it'll go up go back up and dip down and go back up. And you, I can't give all my spots away, but you can go out there and just drop in baits, walk in the bridge, and just see where, you know, your bait takes longer to hit the bottom than, you know, 20 foot this way or 50 foot that way. You know that it's deeper right there, and there's mo there's going to be fish traffic in that area. Um, if you're, when I go out and I fish a bridge, I'm not going to go out there and just throw my bait as far into the open water as I possibly can cast because it's pointless. I mean, yes, you might catch fish out there, but 90% of the fish are going to be hanging around that bridge. That's why I fish the bridges is because I know their structure. I know there's bait and I know that there's fish swimming in this bridge there. I mean, there has to be. Um, another thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that there is a current. Uh, in going, out going, it doesn't make a huge difference. For me, it doesn't. I've caught fish on incoming and outgoing, but I have noticed that the bite is really, really slow whenever there's no water moving at all. As in, I drop my bait straight down and it sits there. And, you know, I'm, let's say I'm using a, a half ounce weight. If that half ounce weight's not getting pushed, <clears throat> you might as well just pack up and go home. Um, you, you, I have better luck, I think, on a outgoing tide whenever the water is rushing towards the, the actual drive on bridge instead of where you stand there and fish because I want I want to send my bait under that bridge and I don't I want it to stay there. Um, there's really really no point in throwing a bait into open water. Uh, there's not there's just not going to be a fish out there whenever there's all this structure that they can be hanging out around. Um, so. You definitely want to fish the bridges, fish by the pylons. That's where those fish are going to be. You definitely want current. You want the current to be incoming, outgoing. You just don't want it to be sitting still. And spend your time at this bridge like I have and find out where those drops and dips in, in the, the change of the bottom, it's there. Trust me. 
Um, you just have to you have to find a spot, try it. If no, if you know you don't get a bite in, let's say thirty minutes to an hour, move. Don't ever just sit in one spot and wait on a fish. They're on that bridge somewhere, whether it be at the very beginning or the very end. There's gonna be a fish somewhere in between that on that bridge. So, like I said, throw your bait out there, let it sit. You know, thirty minutes, an hour. You don't get a bite, move. Don't don't just sit there, move. Keep moving, and you'll eventually find these fish, and you will get bit and you will catch a fish. Okay, so when I am targeting these redfish, um, there's a couple different leaders and stuff like that that I use, but the main two that I'm gonna go over is um, a Carolina rig, and it's very simple. You have a swivel, uh, I use size seven swivels, and then I use 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon, and then you have your hook, and you, you have your swivel, your leader, your hook, and then on the other side of your swivel, you have a weight. Um, it lets that, it, you know, your weight falls down and it's sitting here at the bottom kind of like this right here. And then you have your leader with your little bait on it. You know, he's trying to swim away and get out, you know, trying to get away from the predatorial fish. So that's one of the rigs that I use that is very effective. Um, I will show you guys how to make one by before the end of this video, so don't worry. Um, but the second leader that I use is called a knocker rig. Um, and I don't use a swivel when I do a knocker rig. I tie my braid directly to my um my fluorocarbon and i have a special little knot that i can show you guys how to use and then you take your weight put it on your leader and then you want it to butt up to your hook and sit just like this but the good thing about that is when you have slack in your line it allows that fish to kind of swim away and hang out there and your weight's just sitting there and they also cast a lot lot better than a Car carolina rigs like to twist um and stuff like that so if you have that weight directly on that hook when you go to throw it they're gonna stay together and it helps with casting a whole lot. But um, either one of those two rigs will catch you fish. I prefer the Carolina rig just because I don't really cast when I'm at the bridge. I kind of just pitch my baits under towards the pylons and stuff like that. So take into note these two leaders. Um, at the end of this video, when we get over going over everything, I will show you guys how to make both of those rigs. Um, and they are very, very effective. All right, so the next thing that we are going to go over is like the setups and the type of you know rod reel combos, line, all this good stuff that you want to have to where you have a better chance of catching these these bull reds um, with a bunch of structure around you. It's it's not an easy thing to do. I get broke off a lot, but I also catch a lot of fish out there. Um, the first one that I want to show you is this is my baby. It's a um, pin fierce three. 3000 on a 66 star stellar um, I got 15 pound braid on it uh, this reel it puts out 15 pounds of drag so I just I mean it, it puts out enough power you could be able to stop one of these fish as long as he's not in the structure when he eats your bait um, but this is a, a very good inshore setup even for you know casting artificials and stuff like that and my star stellar hell it's landed you know 10 to 15 pound red snappers out in the gulf of mexico so it's definitely it definitely has the the stopping power that you need um <clears throat> and that would be you know the basic setup that i would take out there um another setup <clears throat> that i have since i strictly use well most of the time i use live bait is it's a, a little speed stick with i think it's like eight pound monofilament but i have a little carolina rig tied on it with a a super 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 tiny hook it's still got a little bait on it whatever but i use a, a lit it's like a, a lightweight carolina rig basically and what i do is i will put you know a, a piece of shrimp maybe this big on it and just drop it down by the pylons and the pinfish will eat it and then you know there you go you got live pinfish right from the source we're at the bridge catching pinfish putting them in a bucket with water and you know the bubbler and all that good stuff to keep them alive and that's what you want to do um another another great setup here um is uh spin fisher 4500 uh, it's got i just put a power knob on it i love this thing i'm gonna have to buy one for me um and it is on a seven foot medium heavy ugly stick and it's got i believe 20 pound braid on it that's plenty of power to stop most of these bigger fish you know from let's say 32 to 36 inches without them, you know, getting crazy and getting you in the structure, but they can catch a 40 inch fish. Um, they can. Um, the next one that I use, disregard the lure that I have on it, but it's a Pin Pursuit 5000. Um, it's got 30 pound braid on it and it's on a, 
seven six medium heavy fast action um st croix mojo inshore um that is another really really good setup that i use out of that bridge and i've caught fish on it every you know um any all, any one of those three besides the little white one that i use for bait i i usually take four to five poles with me and you know i have my my lighter rod which also be my 3000 the 45000 that that's good for you know 32 36 inch fish that that they won't overpower you um like a i mean a 40 inch it would be a heck of a battle um on light tackle like that um the 5000 is really the same thing sometimes i take uh have a pin a pin fierce 2 8000 that i'll take out there with 65 pound braid on it and that's when I'm doing something. I'm actually balloon baits out into the bridge lights at night on an outgoing tide. I'll balloon my bait. You know, I have a pinfish. I have a pinfish, and then I'll have my 30 pound leader and probably use a arm's width, grab it there, bite it off, tie that on, and then you tie a balloon to the top of it. And I usually run a little bitty weight, like a knocker rig. Um, I'll run a little bitty weight down to the fish just to keep him kind of down and maintained so he's not swimming up at the top. and. They just, I, I like my baits to be down in the water whenever I'm doing that. Um, that's, a, that's a very effective method. I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell you guys that, but at night on an outgoing tide, if you take a balloon and you tie your balloon to your main line and then you have your leader going down and you have a live pinfish and on the outgoing tide, you can send your bait under that bridge into the lights. You'll see the lights when you get out there at night. If you put a balloon in those lights, um, you're probably gonna catch a giant. Every time I do it, I have not caught a fish under 36 inches since I've been doing that. I've caught 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 42, 43. I've caught giant, giant fish ballooning my baits out at night. Um, so that's a, that's a re really effective little secret that I will tell you guys. Um, yep. So let's get on to the next topic. Alrighty y'all, so, um, now that we've talked about rods and reels, I've told you one of my dirty little secrets on how I catch these fish. Um, we're going to go over just some of the gear besides fishing rods um, that I have with me whenever I go fishing. Uh, the first one is, make sure you have one of these. It's a drop net. If you, if you catch a 30, 40 inch redfish, you're not going to pull him up with your hands by your line. Um, it's just, it's not going to happen. Make sure that you have a net so that you can drop that down and pull that fish up and then whenever you're done taking the hook out and all that you want to safely lower that fish back down with a net um, i've been doing this for years i know how to get a fish back into the water head first so if it's a big one i i will put him back down in the net but you know 28 29 30 31 32 inches i just kind of i drop them back in and they always land head first um another good thing to have is um a pair of pliers uh, these are actually, I got these for Christmas. I love them. They have, you know, braid splitters. They got split shot cramps. Um, they're just a really, really good set of pliers. Uh, just in, in case this fish, it gets hooked kind of deep and you can't get it out. Make sure that you have something to get either that hook or cut that line and get it off of that fish. I don't, I hate sending fish back into the water with hooks in them. Um, another thing that I like to have is fish grips. Um, you know, you just put this on their lips so you can hold your fish and take your picture um, and all that good stuff and it also helps it just helps maintain your fish without getting your hand tore up because I've, I've stuck my hand in a redfish mouth and it starts flopping around and it, it gets kind of bloody um, another good thing to have is to make sure that you have a headlamp so that you can see at night obviously um, it also helps when you're looking around retying stuff like that and then also have um, this is the big daddy I bought this at Gulf Breeze Bait and Tackle they still have a bunch of them um, it's a it's a really really good light. They're kind of expensive. I think it was almost eighty dollars for this light when I bought it, but this is a really 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 bright good light to have. So you don't have to walk up to all your poles. You can just kind of you know shine it at them and look at them and make sure they're not bobbing around or slacked up or anything like that. Um, then I also have this tackle bag um, with all my stuff in it, and I'm gonna actually make a video of how I got this bag set up because you wanna. Make sure you have plenty of tackle whenever you, you go out and you're going to fish for it. You don't want to go with just one hook, one weight, one swivel, one this, one that. You want to have a bunch of it because you're going to get broke off. It's going to happen. Um, it doesn't matter what, what type of tackle you use, what type of, it doesn't matter. You're going to get broke off. It happens. I've seen people go out there with $700 band stalls and get popped off like nothing like, you know, just boom, they're gone. Um, it's really simple to happen. Um, 
So now that I've kind of gave you guys a rundown of what I do, what I look for, what gears I use, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I make um, the Carolina rig that I use and also the knocker rig. I won't make a knocker rig, I'll just make a Carolina rig and show you guys. So I like to use um, about an arm's length of leader and then um, go ahead and I use a bunch of different size hooks. I mean, I have little ones, big ones, medium ones. I use a bunch of just match your bait, match your hook to your bait. So if you're using a pinfish this big, use a smaller hook. If you're using a, you know, a pinfish the size of your hand, you know, you want a bigger hook so that, that hook's exposed and you have a better chance of getting it in that fish's mouth. Um, so it's really simple. First thing you're going to want to do is always just tie my hook on. Um, and I use a pretty simple knot. You just run it through the eye. Then you pinch your line and then you take this and wrap it around your finger. And then you want to wrap it around the doubled up lines. I usually do five to seven times just depending on how heavy the fluorocarbon I, I use is. And then you take your tag end and where you just looped it around your finger. I don't know if y'all can see it. But you run your tag end back through that little loop. And you pull it tight. And that, that's one of the best knots I've ever used. So now that you've done that. You have your hook, you have the rest of your leader. Go ahead and tie your swivel on. I'll show you guys one more time. You wanna run it through the eye. Then you just pinch it, wrap it around your finger, and then wrap it around that doubled up line. And run it back through the little loop you made with your with your finger. And then pull that tight and always clip your tag ends. Um, so then you're gonna take the main line of your fishing pole your braid or whatever you're using you're going to put this weight on it and then you're going to tie you once you have the weight on your line you're going to tie your line to this swivel so your weight can move and then what will happen is is your weight will be at the bottom sitting here like this you know there's your swivel there and your bait can you know go up as far or out or around do whatever he would really wants to do and then when a predatorial fish comes up and the fish you'll see him get nervous with your rod tip it'll kind of just start it'll kind of jump like that and you know that fish is trying to get away from something and but the bad thing is is your weight's pinned down here at the bottom and he he can only go so far so when that fish comes around um he will get ate and you better just hold on for dear life um also make sure that when you're fishing these bridges a lot of people like to loosen their drag up and just set it on the bridge and let them start pulling line yeah that no that's a bad idea that's how you get broke off <clears throat> um either buy you a little rod holder to put on the side rail and just always keep it no keep it like locked down make it if i mean if they bow it up good they need to be able to pull a little bit of line till you can get to it but they also have holes drilled in set your rod there make sure your drag is tight don't leave it loose because as soon as they eat your bait they're going for the structure and you don't want them to you know pull 15 20 yards of line before you even get there and boom they're in the structure you're done game over um so use this carolina rig and then to do the knocker rig We'll bite this swivel off, and then you'll run your line. Of course, I get a bad weight. You'll run your line through. Right here, let me grab it on. Run your line through the weight, just like this. And then you want it to be just like this. And then, I mean, you can still use a swivel if you want to. I don't, but that's kind of how you want it to be. Is that's why it's called a knocker rig. But these these are really good for casting. Um, and they, they are still pretty effective. I don't feel like they're as effective as a Carolina rig at the bridge, but they are still a very effective way to catch fish out there, especially with a lot, because they can still, you know, if you leave them some slack in this line, they can still kind of move around a little bit and draw that fish's attention. Um, so I really hope that this video helps you guys out. Um, let me know in the comment section below or on Facebook, whatever you want to do. If this helped you out, um, I really, really, really hope it does. That's what I want to do is I want to help people be able to go out and catch more fish and have a good time while they're fishing. Um, but until next time, I will see you guys later. Huge shout out to Archipelago and Shady Rays um, for supplying me with the gear that I use in my videos and stuff like that. And a huge shout out to Penn. They make an awesome product whenever it comes to fishing reels and stuff like that. But um, you guys take it easy and I will see you next week.